is a show that focuses on the person behind the brony. I'm your host, Osaka Jack. Please sit back and relax as we talk to this week's guest brony. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Into the Spotlight. This is your host, Osaka Jack. And with me today, I have someone that you may recognize from Twitter or from several other locations, Mr. Calvin. Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> now, I have to ask, your screen name is Death Scar. Yep, that's my online name. <laughs> How did we come by that? Oh, <laughs> um, when I was in primary one, which was, I think I was six. Yeah, I was six. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember this so clearly, and I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I was lying in bed, and I thought to myself, what if I gave myself a nickname? And the first two words that popped into my head were um, Death and Scar. And I just went, yeah, let's put those two together. Bam, I'm the, I'm, I'm the coolest guy in class now, Death Scar. No one can beat my nickname. And I stuck with it for till now, and I don't know why. I guess I can't think of a better nickname. And mostly because that's been my internet sonar for like ever since... I ever came up with it. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's that's probably how it came about, and I remember it so clearly, and I have no idea why. Yeah, it's very uh, distinct name, I will say. <laughs> I don't I I don't think that's a name that I can be I I can be using if I if I go to any more anything less than a PG chat. <laughs> Death um uh, can I changing the name a little? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think. Uh... I think if you try to draw an OC pony but named Death Scar, yeah, that might violate a lot of the PG rules. But I think just as a name, eh, sure, why not? It works. <laughs> yeah, true. I do have an OC, I think. Yeah, well, it's oh. yeah, but it's um, I I kind of created it in like two minutes. I just chose the most the least repulsive color scheme and I just went with it. So you went with black with a neon background and made it an alicorn and decided to name... Uh, no? <laughs> the, hey! No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, it's, a, it's a Pegasus with a black and blue... It's a Pegasus with a black and blue mane, okay. black and light blue tail, that's, and a brown body, just because it was the least repulsive. And I, and I didn't have the patience to sit through, clicking through the color wheel any longer. <laughs> Right, I understand. Sure. Yeah, I, uh, all props up to people who can design and artistically capable. Mine, I don't know, the pony creator, I just kind of clip, kept clicking random until it got close to something. Oh, that looks nice. Let's try to alter this a little bit. Well, it works. I mean, your, yeah. your OC color scheme fits. I actually <laughs> had a lot of help. Uh, one of my design friends uh, d- devoted an entire afternoon to helping me with it. You guys don't want to see the original. It was just bad. At least, at least it wasn't an alicorn. <laughs> Very true. I did not choose an alicorn. I didn't. I am. I'm convinced. I want to make at some point. I want to make an OC who uses every negative aspect of every OC ever. It'd be, and it would be a black alicorn with neon borders, and I think it should be named Comic Sans. Oh no. <laughs> You, you, you've just created the very fabric of things that the whole internet will direct its hate against. I know. Wouldn't it be great? We could yeah, I mean, there would be no more hate on the internet. Around against. <laughs> we'll get everyone to hate on it, and we'll ban everyone's IP who ever hates on it. <laughs> that way, we can get rid of any haters on the internet. <laughs> in theory, practically, that probably will never happen in the entire eternity of life. Yeah, probably not, but. I, th- I still think it would be interesting to create this character and just <laughs> see what it could and do. And don't tell them what you created it for and see how people react. Actually yeah. act proud of it. Like, this is the best OC. No <laughs> one steal it. It's the most greatest OC of all time. Your OC bows down to my OC. <laughs> Princess Celestia bows down to my OC. That could be canon. I- I'll make that my head canon. <laughs> and you pitch it to Sipsy and Amy King Raja. Hey, you know, this, this, this pony's pretty good, huh? <laughs> I don't know if I would pitch it to them, but it might be funny just to pitch it to as many pony artists as possible and just see who would draw it and who would just stop talking to me forever. Well, yeah, pr- probably. Hey, um, can I commission? It's like, I'll pay you $100 to draw this guy. No, <laughs> never talk to me again. I don't even care if you pay me a country. I, I'm not drawing that. <laughs> 
oh, that's oh, you should actually do that. Now I'm really curious as to how of how stereotypical and offensive and completely ugly you can make a pony yes. in Pony Creator. Mm. Hmm. It would have to have uh, uh, Nightmare Moon style eyes and bat wings in addition to being the alicorn. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, I, I, I've, I've started I I copying something. Hmm. I think I just went blind. I think my mind, my mind, I just decided. Nope. I, you're on your own here. <laughs> I have nothing to do with this. <sighs> <laughs> well, you, uh, you tend to have something. You have something in common with me that most of the people listening to do not. In that, uh, you're a lot closer to me than the people listening. Yes, I am. <laughs> I live in Singapore. Oh. And possibly one of the... I mean, there are a lot of bronies here, but mm. many of them don't interact out of, with other than with Singapore bronies. Okay. So, who knows? I could, I, I could be very well one of the few out there Asian bronies. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, very possibly. Um, I know there are Japanese bronies. I just don't know of another one in Osaka. I'm sure there are. But I have yet to meet one, and until I do, I retain my title of the Brony in Osaka. <laughs> yeah, you can't say the Brony in Japan because Black Griffin is also in Japan for now. <laughs> yes, yes, very true. And I have met uh, two or three others that are in Japan. So yeah, I, I used to say the only one in Japan, but no, that was that was wrong. I'm... That was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I just kind of said that to see if I could get somebody to say, "No, you're not." Oh, smart. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm yeah. saying I'm the only brony in Osaka and like waiting and like nobody's contradicting me. Like, darn, maybe I am. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, well, you are the only brony in Osaka, but you're not. But every other brony is in every other part of Japan that you are not in. Isn't that great? <laughs> oh. Uh, yay. It's yay, difficult me. to have a meetup when everybody is minimum 30 minutes away from each other. And. Oh wow! <laughs> well, it, well, in Singapore, if you're if you're more if you're about two hours away, that that means you still can meet up because I you can reach anywhere in Singapore in like one and a half hours with the public transport system here. So there's no excuse as to why you can't attend a meetup. Yeah, <laughs> Very you just true. can't say, oh, the traveling time is way the the distance is way too far. We're in Singapore. We're smaller than Rhode Island. <laughs> well, tr well tr true, but. Ah, oh, forget it. <laughs> I could understand, and uh, to be honest, I have not been to Singapore. I'd like to visit someday, but I haven't been. But I have heard people say that the rush hour traffic is just insane bad. So if somebody <laughs> is speaking, if, if you have a meetup for right in the middle of rush hour, I can understand somebody saying I can't get there with travel time. Well, yeah, um, in, in the rush hour here, if you take my car... Um, Depending on the road you go to, it can be really bad. Like, um, there's this shopping district we like to call, we like to call Orchard Road. Um, if it's, it's filled to the brim with, uh, shopping malls lying like an entire section of, uh, this whole city, and it's mm -hmm. one big section with, I think, a thirty thirty shopping malls, all about wow. eight nine stories high or higher, and it's just it's filled. And on weekends, um, if you go there like during public holidays or even during weekends, mm -hmm. that place there, even the foot traffic, it's just horrendous. It's oh, really, it. really, really bad. And um, But the thing is that the public transport system in Singapore um, is actually really efficient. Um, Good. The trains come in five minutes intervals and chances are if you can't catch the first train, you could very well catch the second train and you can probably be in your destination within an hour, even if it's across Singapore or something. That's so, nice. uh yeah, it's good, but uh, we, again, the foot traffic for public holidays on mm. certain areas is just really bad. And not that you can't make it, but you kind of just don't want to. Right. Because <laughs> there's so many people there and you just... Oh, yeah, don't... I understand. Yeah, if if I'm planning to go out, if it's a public holiday, no, I'm not going to go anywhere. I don't have problems getting through because everybody's a good, you know, 15 centimeters shorter than I am at least. But... I just don't want to push everybody out of the way. I yeah, feel like, I know that feeling. <laughs> I feel like Fezzik from Princess Bride. Everybody move! <laughs> and I don't oh, always want to do that. I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah, um, okay, I went, mm, all right, I want to get by now. Okay, 
All right, I'm done. Yeah, Push. that's 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 kind of how I do public transport. It's like if I see, um, I actually wait for the people who want to come out of the train. I allow them to come out, but um, there's many other people who don't, and they just squeeze in while the people try and come out. So there's this jam, and I'm standing. I'm like one of the few people at the back, just waiting for the whole jam to die down. And when it does, the train is full. So I gotta wait for the next train, uh, and this cycle repeats until I can finally squeeze in without uh, trying to jam my way through, and right. it's really really bad. <laughs> Uh, rush hour is different over here, but for the most part, uh, people will wait until everyone gets off the train and then they'll get on, um, except for old people. <laughs> oh. it, it's kind of like, I'm old, I deserve to get in first. <laughs> and they'll just push ahead. Well, but, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, oh. it's, um, I, I have to admit, I'm sorry, I have no idea. Is My Little Pony least in singapore i mean that's well for me it's not available on itunes japan legally. oh no no it's and, um you know i'm not sure if it's available on itunes because i don't really use itunes but okay. from what i can see it is okay um i i i think we um uh well i got into my little pony shoe youtube so mm. i um I know that we have a we have a channel in Singapore that just started showing I think season two if I'm not wrong. Okay. So, um, a bit behind on the times right now. Yeah. So, but but uh, well, it's it's still it's still a ch- a channel that um ki- kids in Singapore who don't who aren't internet savvy can still go watch. So I mean they do show in Singapore just not as not as uh not as modern as. That's great, uh, yeah. As uh, the Americans or YouTube, right? So, I see, yeah. I see. And I also watch it through live streams right now, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's how I catch up. Yeah, uh, it's not released in Japan, so technically the only way I'm legally able to watch it is to get the DVDs. But, oh. Mm. Do Which they sell those as well, or do you have to, or do you have to order them, or? I had to order the DVD from the American Amazon. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the shipping fees. Actually, oh, not much of a shipping fee. For some reason, Amazon has dropped their DVD shipping fees to Japan. I'm not complaining. I'm enjoying it fa- rather much. I can finally get DVDs for less than twenty five dollars. So like, oh yay! I can't get any. I can't get any pony merchandise. Uh, I can get. I can't get any affordable pony merchandise because even if the price is affordable, the shipping somehow always costs more than the m- m- more than the price, and it's ridiculous. I feel your brother. Mm. We are actually talking about it a little bit before. Um, I can get the blind bag ponies, but the only site that will sell it to me, Toy Wiz, has just um, outrageous shipping fees that are often as much as the product itself. If not more. Yeah, yeah. but you said you have another route that you go with for blind bags. Uh, yeah, but uh, I'm not too sure. I think it's called Taub. Taobao. I, 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 okay. I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm sorry for all those Chinese listening. For all those Singaporeans, if my, if my Chinese is really bad, I'm gonna have to apologize because <laughs> my Chinese, I speak with an American accent, and I've been known by my friends or to speak with this accent, and it's, mm-hmm. and it's kind of a running gag between us. But yeah, <laughs> so um, this website, I know that my, I have a friend that constantly browses it, and um, she actually got the blind bag ponies. I wouldn't say they were cheap, but right. she got them, and. I think cheaper than anywhere else I can get them, especially Toy Wiz. I'm sure Toy Wiz would mm. charge me twice the amount for blind bags just for the shipping. Probably, but, yeah, shipping would yeah. yeah, send it over. Finally, someone who understands my pain of shipping prices costing more than a product. <laughs> Every time I talk oh, to yeah. it to an American brony, they're like, really? I mean, how can shipping be so expensive? Are you sure that you didn't click the item twice? Yes, we're very sure. Yes, yes, I'm a thirty-five dollar sure. item has forty-five dollars in shipping. Shipping, yes, yes. I, I know, I know. <laughs> shipping is free in your country. Shipping is free in your country. <laughs> well, and I, I would not honestly, I would not be upset if I didn't know that shipping is not that expensive. When I, when I'm in America and sending things to myself personally, it doesn't cost near that much. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's, it's done by weight, and I know that blind bag ponies don't weigh that much. So there's no reason for me to be charged that much. But, well, a blind bag pony! Yeah. Which I love, and they're so cute, but... 
and there's no reason I should be charged so much for the blind bag ponies, even though it's Rainbow Dash and I want it so badly. And okay, fine, you win this time. <laughs> have you uh, been able to acquire much swag? Not necessarily blind have... ponies, but beyond that. Uh, I um I have my own Rainbow Dash plushie. Oh, nice. Uh, the 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 shipping uh I it's actually handmade from a um a commissioner on mm-hmm. Devinart. Okay. Her, I think it's called um Chibi Katie, but I think you can find her on Facebook called Plush Palace. And I got it, and it's hand sewn, it's embroidered, and I think that with shipping, mm. hand embroidered plushie, it costs I think close to about Singapore seventy dollars, I think, and. Okay. I mean, my shirt, two wheel of fine shirts, cost more than my handmade, hand embroidered with <laughs> shipping plushie. Nice. There's something wrong here. <laughs> I do have. I also do have five, uh, four wheel of fine shirts. But uh, the re- the reason that did, those didn't cost as much because I think I ordered them with a group, mm. so I think the prices were a bit lower. Not by much, but they were a right. bit lower. So um, I managed to get four and. Uh, Two, three of them are Rainbow Dash because you know. <clears throat> I'm not saying who's best pony here, but you know, someone has a little. Lead. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm, I am not. I, I'm not gonna start this war. <laughs> uh, I think that there are two things that people will never agree on: which toppings are best for pizza, and which is best pony. Oh, and uh, and uh, and a third one would be um, uh, what is your favorite bro? What is your favorite song from the fandom? Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. And also, which is your favorite episode? All your favorite side character. <laughs> or basically anything to do with MLP, I think. <laughs> you want to do thing. I think it's interesting how often discussions appear on... Uh, arrive... Arise on topics like that. But I have yet to hear anybody get into a re... Or listen to, anyway. Anybody get into a real uh, drag-it-out, knock-down battle about it. I've had people, you know, get people will get pretty insistent, but I have yet to hear anybody get really ticked off because somebody else disagrees with them. Then I guess the message of the show is working. I hope Yay. so. Yay! Because, <laughs> uh, I, I, well, I mean, that's a good thing. I, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's great. I hope to never ever see people fight because they, want, they think that Applejack is best pony because... I mean, can you imagine two guys brawling out in a mall and they're shouting, Applejack is best pony, punch! (laughs) I I just think the irony would be if somebody was trying to claim that Fluttershy, She's kind! Kindness is the best! You gotta be kind! (laughs) Magic! My fist is pure magic! (laughs) Why aren't you laughing? Why aren't you laughing? Pinkie Pie saved my life. Oh god, I'm so sorry. Please don't kill me. <laughs> I'm being generous with my violence. <laughs> I am Will Start Me. If somebody tries to say Rainbow is the best pony, I don't have a rhyme, I'm gonna punch your face in. <laughs> Applejack would actually be the easiest one. I honestly am gonna kick your butt right now. <laughs> oh. Oh, why do I see? Oh, I I stopped laughing because I can actually see that happening. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Someone help! <laughs> so, give it time. Give it time. Give it time. <laughs> well, one thing that you do uh, contribute a bit is uh, you do some of the fiction writing. Is that oh right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm a fan fiction writer. Uh, I write fan fiction for the fan base. <laughs> What are some of your uh, more memorable stories that you've written? Memorable uh, as, in, as you think they stand I'm out as like, oh, this is good. I like this one. Oh, uh, well, um, the like the two fix I'm really proud of is um, out of all my fix. Uh, of course, I say number one is um, a fix called the most valuable treasure, which is a uh, thing. It's about ten. 10,000 words or longer, I think. I'm, I'm not sure, but it's about... That was uh, um, Daring Do, right? Yeah, that was Daring Do. Uh, I really like that fic because actually it spawned from 
or just ran, random stray idea. Like I had, there was nothing that to prod the idea. There was no artwork that prod the idea. I just sat down at my computer, started playing and halfway through late at night, which is where sadly most of my ideas come from. And that's why I never get enough sleep. Mm-hmm. Is, um, I, I just came out like, what if Daring Do really existed, but we don't know anything about her. Mm-hmm. What will her past be like? Why is she hunting for all these treasures? Why, mm-hmm. you know, all these treasures? Why is she carrying out all this stuff? And I started to expand on that and I started to um, really, really try to grow the idea. And in the end, I started planning the idea and the planning itself took like eight pages, even wow. though they were in point form, which is crazy. Uh, and then I just started writing. And what I really like is I personally really like how all the ideas flow and mm. I I really like um how, how much the ideas grew I like um how much I started to really really like Daring like instead of just a Indiana Jones character I right. writing this really showed me that she had so much to be expanded on that the fandom could really really just take advantage of <laughs> and also where I really loved cuz I um, I learned a lot from that story. I learned proper attribution of speech. I learned new vocabulary. I really put a lot, a lot of effort into it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that's what I'm really proud of. Oh, that's uh, great. The other one would be um, of new, my newest release would be the the warmth in our hearts because mm. that's for Heartwarming Eve. And, oh, okay, um, okay. It was act- it's actually supposed to be just um, a, a Christmas fic that had no hidden meanings. Like there wasn't mm-hmm. any... Um, shipping. There wasn't any anything but just six friends gathered around at, at Sweet Apple Acres and just mm. having a good time. So that's okay. what I really wanted to achieve with that fic. Right. Um, and what I really tried to accomplish with that was um, to give um, my the people who read it just this warm, cozy feeling. You know, like right. like Christmas might give. Mm-hmm. But uh, sadly, uh, due to a mishap, uh, the the fic didn't appear in like um, the front of. FIM fiction, like as the oh. latest uploads, and only about fifty people read it. So they, oh. it, it, it kind of sucked. I, yeah. I'm not saying I'm right for the views, but right. I just, I, 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 as an artist, it would be wrong for me to say I don't want to get noted for my work. I think every artist mm. wants to get noted for their work, but right. uh, I just, I, I just uh, should have made the mistakes. It's mostly on me, but. Yeah, that's what I'm a bit disappointed with, but uh, sure. I mean, it's it, it's over. the The damage has been done. I mm. um, I'm just gonna move on. <laughs> you could go in and just like change one character's name. Okay, Spike will be Spoke, and I'm gonna re-release the story. And no. <laughs> and then the and I will get um and I will get hunted on FIM Fisher. Why do you release this story twice? <laughs> it's exactly the same. I, 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 I tried. I mean, <laughs> look, Spike is now Spoke. We don't know who Spoke is. Yeah, really? Fandom, Fandom get to work. Fandom, Spoke, <laughs> go, 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 go. Spoke could either be a bicycle riding pony or could be a character that has decided to never speak again. <laughs> a character that's... <laughs> Or it can be both, a bicycle riding pony that doesn't speak at all. There we go. Spoke. Yeah, there we go. We have spoke. Fandom, get to work. I, I expect Aku within the next 10 minutes. I expect <laughs> a fan fiction. I expect Equestria Daily to have a banner up, spoke the pony. Now, get to work. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Sadly, I don't have the commanding power that every single staff staff member on the show has. Yeah. Then again, I'm happy I don't because I would abuse the hell of that power. Yes, that, yeah. Yeah, I think that a lot of people uh, claim to want the power, but what would you do with it? Ah, okay, that's why you don't have it, see? I I know what I do with it, and I know why I don't have it, and I'm mm-hmm. glad that I don't have it. Yep. <laughs> uh, give me that kind of power over a fandom. I would run the fandom into the ground within, like, ten minutes. <laughs> yep, probably. I think most people would, even the best intentions. Yep. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have that power. <laughs> With great power comes great responsibility. Uh-huh. I, I, I'm not good at harboring such great responsibility. Mm-hmm. Well, anybody who thinks they are needs a little bit of humility as well. So. <laughs> true, very true. Never thought of it that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's pretty sad. That means you can never, you can never ever have great power because the two will never coincide properly. Well, I think power, responsibility, and humility. 
those three would be difficult to have all at the same time. Choose two. You can't have all three. <laughs> <laughs> the triangle. Mm. <sighs> well, um, something you've mentioned a few times on Twitter is that you're uh, working at a Polytechnic. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a junior college. Or um, I'm I'm not sure. I'm I think they have polytechnics in America. I I I don't know, but um, I don't recognize like the name. They they may have something huh? similar to it, but the name doesn't it's, fall. It's. Do you guys have junior college in America? Um. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, it's just like um before you go on to university. Uh, this okay. is um the. You can either go to a junior college or you can go to a polytechnic. A junior college is some it's where you learn subjects like you know um like you've been learning for the past um twelve years, which is uh, English, maths, science, okay. um, or art, or these kind of stuff. And right. but in polytechnic, it's more of like university. You choose a course, you choose a speciali specialization, and mm -hmm. you learn those that are relating to that industry. So okay. um, I'm. It's. I guess you can call it pre-uni, okay. university. I, right, right. I'm not sure what Americans will call it, but uh, yep, I'm uh, in a polytechnic and I'm learning um, video game development. Interesting. Video game development. What's your ultimate goal for that? Obviously, develop video games. Yes, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going into video game development to learn how to Dude. make rugs. What do you think? Duh. No. Uh, I mean, like, come on. It's so obvious. Even Pinkie Pie could see it. If Pinkie Pie can see it, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the ultimate goal in this? I actually don't know, because... Good answer. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I don't know, because... I mean... No. I'm totally Actually, serious when I say good answer. It it disturbs me to no end when I talk to a junior high school student or even a high school student who has their entire career mapped out in front of them. I'm like, you are not allowing for the change that is life. This is not going to go according to your plan, and when your plan messes up, you're going to have gonna... a bad time. I actually don't have anything past past Polytechnic mapped out. Okay. Actually, I don't know if I'm going to go to a small video game uh, uh, industry. I'm not sure if I'm going to go to a big video game industry. I'm not sure if I'm going to go to stay in Singapore. I'm not sure if I'm going to migrate to America. I don't know if I'm going to university to further my studies. I don't know. I, I really don't know because mm -hmm. I, I, just, I just can't fathom as to where, where um, I should go. Right. I guess it's due to... Uh, the fact that I have two years of army, um, mm -hmm. compulsory army after um, polytechnic. So ah, okay. um, 2014, I'll be going to the army for two years. So I can only resume so-called my life at 2016. Right, right. <laughs> so um, I find that that's a bit far off to be start planning because a lot can happen in four years. A lot can happen in three, four years. Sure, so absolutely. Well, I, I mean, heck, when did we first become bronies? <laughs> How, sh how short ago was that, and how much has that changed our lives? Yeah, true. Right? Yeah, I, exactly. And I, the only thing I know that is, I hope to eventually. I don't know when, but I hope to eventually just make a game that uh, that I can be proud of, which is hmm. what, uh, like my own concept, and I want to see it develop into a game that I can say, yeah, I developed this game. I, I'm happy I developed this game. I worked with great people, and I'm happy that uh, this game is out there for people to play. Yeah. So I guess that's my goal, but mm -hmm. that's 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 years and years away. <laughs> I guess I'll work towards that, uh, but un until then, I'll just go wherever life life takes me for now. <laughs> There's nothing much you. I can do right now. Good for you. I appreciate that sentiment. Uh, it is not a common sentiment in Japan. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. It's not a common sentiment in Asia. It's not a con <laughs> con common sentiment in Singapore too. Not that I'm saying like Singaporeans are like, are like, um, oh, they always know what they want to do in life. But I know quite a few people who actually don't. They don't have control over their lives. It's what their parents want them to do, and mm. I find that a bit saddening, to be honest. And yeah, I can understand. Sure. Because I mean, it's it's your life, and there's I, I'm sure there's something that. You you want to do? There's something you like, and um, to have your parents try to choose your career for you, uh, to choose your entire life path for you, it just it just feels kind of it just feels kind of sad. Sure, but sure, but I'm but I'm very there was happy. A, there's a there's a oh, what is it? It's a terrible joke. It's um, young girls growing up, 
and her parents force her to take piano lessons. And she says, I want to be a ballerina. I want to dance. And her parents mm -hmm. say, no, you're going to take piano lessons. And every week she has to take piano lessons for years and years and years. And she's always insisting, I don't want to play piano. I want to dance. I want to dance. I want to be a ballerina. I want to dance. Mm -hmm. And she finally gets uh, done with high school, and she goes to college, and she says, I'm never taking a piano lesson again. And her friend says to her, well, you know, this has been difficult for you, but at least now you have the knowledge. So when you have a child, you'll make the right decision. And, she, and the lady says, yes, when I have a child, she's going to dance. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's so true. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's... No, oh, that's terrible. In both the sense that I can see it clearly happening in the yep. sense that Oh god, that's that's a little well that's that's oh, I've, I I really have nothing to say about that story. <laughs> Cuz it's so it it's it is a joke, true. but it's something you could easily see happening or hear something yeah. saying. I think every yeah. every one of us knows someone like that and some people have parents like that and some people are parents like that unfortunately, but mm. I don't think it's a bad thing to hope that your children do better than you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm very lucky to have parents that um, that uh, you know s support me in yep. my in in my choice, and mm -hmm. I'm very happy <laughs> that I'm lucky enough to get uh, to have parents like these. Yep, absolutely. Yes, and not everyone does, and so we have to feel lucky for it. And people choose jobs. Uh, I a lot of people choose jobs because they want money, and yep. not because they like to do it. A, yep. a lot of my friends are hating what they're doing right now, but sure. you know what they're doing? They're doing it. You know why? Cash. Yeah. Pull hard cash. <laughs> do what you got to do, so you can do what you want to do. Yeah. That almost sounds like a song in and of itself. I could just add a beat to that, and I've got a pop hit right there. Do what Quick you got to do, someone. so you can do what you want to do. Someone rip. Rip Osaka Jack's um, <gasps> rip this audio out, rip that clip file out, and <laughs> remix that. Throw some dubstep in it. Throw some beats. Throw some drops. Yeah, we we got a Brony song for Osaka Jack. Hey, yeah. drop it. Drop it drop. like it's warm for you to touch and burn your. No, wait, that didn't work. Okay. Yo, yo, yo! I'm hip. Yo, yo, <laughs> yo, yo, dog. All right, I Yo. can admit that at one point I almost purchased a pair of parachute pants. <laughs> was it for a special occasion or was it just... Just you know because what? they were there and available and they looked cool. And Good for fortunately, you. I didn't have enough money at the time, so I'm rather lucky in this case. Blessing in disguise. Yep, yeah, indeed. <laughs> and even if we had enough money, a thief... You, a thief would probably come, give me all your money! Why are you taking my money? So you can't buy those ugly pair of parachute pants, man, I'm saving you! <laughs> that could be a new, a, a new anti-hero. Instead of Robin Hood, and instead of robbing from the rich, robbing from the people who are about to buy something that's a huge mistake. <laughs> they try, oh, I'm totally gonna buy this, give me all your money! What? Why? <laughs> Those those pants those that shirt does not go with those shoes, man. <laughs> Crazy. Fashion Robin Hood. I can see that'll be rarity superhero. <laughs> Just, you, man, you give me all that money. Why? You cannot purchase this. It's taffeta. You don't know. <laughs> it's also what you don't know that those shoes. Oh my god, blue slack. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but then again, that would be the worst robber ever, because. It would be he or she would be identifiable from a mile away. Yeah, they probably right. using glitter. They come in with the shop with the sunglasses and a handbag with a poodle inside it. <laughs> she comes with a gun. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've just thought of Marvel. I'm giving I'm giving you that hero for free. Now take it and roll with it. You're welcome. <laughs> take it and roll with it. You're welcome. This hero is for free. Of no, 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 no. Don't give it to them. This could be the anti-hero in your video game that you're going to develop. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> take backs. Sorry, Marvel. Not yours anymore. <laughs> you get Tara Strong to voice act Marvel. <laughs> that would work. That alone would make it work. <laughs> I imagine she's using this. No, I need Tabitha, and I, I, I would get Tabitha, and I would just get her to do the photo finish voice. Oh, there we go. Yes. Ah, the character, the robber name isn't Robin Hood. It's photo finish. 
Wunderbar. <laughs> that, that go with the magics. And then when the uh, when they are finished doing, I go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I go. <laughs> then there's this theme music that goes along. That would be the most boring gameplay ever, though. In, <laughs> imagine going into a fashion store, spotting fashion disasters, and just holding a guy out. It's like, <laughs> oh god, it's. I can imagine now, Grand Theft Auto fashion. <laughs> 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 I am not. I am not looking forward to developing that game. But now I have the idea stuck in my head. Thank you very much, Osaka Jai. Hey, no problem. As long as I can get ideas stuck in your head, that's all that counts. Oh God, I can't get the idea out of my head now. <laughs> well, all right. Here's a distraction then. Uh, something okay. I ask everybody. Uh, in My Little Pony, is there one scene or one line that defines you as a brony? Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's an evil question. Yeah. That is... Oh, okay. Oh, uh, wait. <laughs> oh. Can we come back in five years? <laughs> we just five cut this years? Out. Come on, man. No. <laughs> we come back in only five years? Like, I finally thought of it. It was episode one all along. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, five um... years will be in the uh, twilight of season eight. Ha! Huh? Did you hear, hear what I did? I said twilight. I had to... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you deserve a medal mm. that I I'm not even gonna finish the sentence. Uh, <laughs> one scene that defines me as a brony. Uh, line that really sticks out to you and oh, really sticks you. out to me. Yeah. Um, just something oh, that you you saw it and oh, that's me. That's absolutely me. <laughs> uh, la, la, la. <laughs> um, I. Uh, well, the one line that really rem- that really sticks out in my mind that I remember to this day is in the lesson in Party of One, where Pinkie Pie says that um, you gotta believe that your your friends always have the best in store for you, or something related like that, right? <laughs> Just cause um, I've I've always had this weird problem when. I would get really paranoid for no reason. Like some days I would just get really paranoid. Mm-hmm. And um, like, for example, my, I would um, message uh, a friend of mine and he reply late and he reply later. And then I message him a reply after that. And he doesn't reply for like a few hours and I get paranoid. I was wondering if I said something wrong and all that. And it, it really started to wear on me because I started to realize that I had this problem. Right. But it took part of one to, and it's it's it took part of one to tell me that um, chances are your your friend just something just came up. That's that's there's nothing wrong. Your friends, true friends, always have the best in store for you. They wouldn't actually plot to really really hurt you. Right. I mean, they might plot to prank you. I mean, that's what. Yeah, really pranking goes, that <laughs> happens. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's one lesson that really sticked out in my mind because it it was really relatable and it also told me that. Wow, this show really... I can't believe I just learned something from My Little Pony. Because I was still in that stage <laughs> when I wouldn't admit that I watched My Little Pony. Mm-hmm. I would just go, My Little Pony? Yeah, that show is... It, it's alright. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's special. I mean, it's just... It's okay. <laughs> but yeah, I, that that lesson really stuck out in my mind. It's, it's one that I think that will continue to stick out in my mind. That's a good one. I like that. I think you're the first person to mention an actual uh, letter to Celestia moment. Really? Yeah, I mean, I've gotten a variety of answers on that one, but I think you're the first person to mention something specifically from one of the letters to Celestia. Oh, I kind of thought the letters to Celestia would kind of be what most people would choose, because, I mean... Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yay! Originality! Woohoo! Yeah. Woohoo! Oh, no. Oh, that's... that's... Okay. Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> okay. Woohoo. Well, you just mentioned that you're in the um, for a while. You're in the in-between phase. How long uh, did it take you to do a full morph into full brony? Uh, I think from week. like first watching until that's it. I'm a brony. Uh, a week. A week. <laughs> a oh, week. Wow. Because uh, I watched all the episodes in one and a half days. It was oh, wow. during my holidays, so I, I for the past like for 
it was at the last two weeks of my holidays and I had nothing to do. I, for the first one and a half months, I was sitting at my computer every day. I ran out of games to play. I had nothing to do. So I, I, um, the first thing I watched was this Phoenix Wright and My Little Pony crossover, which was Turnabout Storm. And it was really good. And I was like, these characters definitely don't show this kind of characterization inside the show. I mean, they're probably all like tea party and all that. And I watched the future twilight episode i was like this is okay i knew it was extremely good and i knew that i was hooked Mm -hmm. i just didn't want to admit it i mean i just and i moved on to um uh what was episode 20 dragon quest and after that i backwards then when i reached um really and weep i realized why am i going backwards i went back to season one (laughs) i watched the whole thing again Mm. all the way till season all the way to Saturday, and then I watched live stream for Hurricane Fluttershy, uh-huh. but I still didn't want to admit I was a brony. <laughs> so one thing that really made me say, yeah, I'm I'm happy to be a brony. I'm I'm happy that I like my little pony was Black Griffin's proud to be a brony. That That is a good one. That was when I realized that wow, I there are really smart, really intelligent, really talented people in this fandom that mm-hmm. really like my little pony and they're really genuine about it. And I was like Wow, I actually didn't know about. <laughs> I actually didn't know there'd be these kind of people. And that's um, that song actually. Um, I um, I was in the phase where I admitted that I watched it, but I was like, Brony, man, I'm not sure. Um, but I had transferred the actual songs from My Little Pony over to my iPod. Uh, this was right before season. This was like three or four season, three or four episodes into season two. I had transferred the music to my iPod. But when I listen, I heard people say brony musicians. I was like, man, nah, that's okay. Uh, uh, nah. Just the music from this show is fine. And then I heard a few songs. I'm like, well, okay, let, let's put these two songs on. And one of the songs was uh, Sweet Apple Acres by Mando Pony. And the other oh, one goodness. was Proud to be a Brony by Black Griffin. And I put those on my iPod. And the more I listen to it, I'm like, this, this is really good. I like this music. Let, let's see what else we got out there. And that's when it started. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, and watching the show more and uh, quoting it more and... And during the fandom and actually interacting with act with Ronies, I guess, on Twitter or something. Yep, yeah. Well, Twitter oh. didn't start until uh, May of this year, and that's when I got a smartphone. I didn't, oh. I didn't really get Twitter until I had a smartphone. Cause it, Likewise, yeah. I didn't get Twitter until July of this year. I was like, Twitter, why would you go to a website where people can only type 140 letters? That's crazy. And yeah, why are thinking, people on? I have email. I can write pages of email, and it's fine. Yeah. But then and I realized I that smartphone. I'm like, oh, I get it. Okay, just a little blurb from wherever I am to wherever you are. Oh. oh. And then you, and then your night suffered. <laughs> Well, I've been pretty prolifically tweeting. See, I think you're you're pretty high up there as well, aren't you? No. No. I n- not as not as much as you are though. No, oh, no, not as much as I am. No, absolutely not. I'm Yeah, it's it's a problem with me, but you're in you're you're yeah, you're in the thousands of tweets. Yeah, I I, I don't know how many of those thousands of tweets are actually a flick. I I are actually stuff that I said on the whim. <laughs> well, that's kind of the point of Twitter, I think. <laughs> well, oh, point. Yeah. Fine, I, you, you win. Yes, I made a thousand. Of, I'm a, I'm a twit, I'm a Twitterholic. I'm Kelvin. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Kelvin. Kelvin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh no, I have a problem. I, I need help. Uh, Someone help me. <laughs> Hold on, let me retweet what you just said. <laughs> okay, he said he needs help. <laughs> <laughs> I need help. Someone retweet me. Get me help. <laughs> I need, I'm addicted to Twitter. Retweet if you think you can help me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like those people that go on Facebook. Like, like if you agree with this status. I was like... Wow, you have gathered... somebody put a status that just says hit like if you hate for people asking you to hit like for something. Oh, I, oh, I've done that before. Yeah, I got like two likes, and yeah, that. Let's just say that I, I was just really bored. <laughs> I just real, 
And it was when I joined Twitter that I realized that most of my Facebook wall posts were already under 140 letters. Mm, yeah, that's a good point. So only then did I realize, oh crap, I've been doing Twitter this whole while, haven't I? Mm. <laughs> oh. Well, is there anything that you'd like to plug while you're here? A project mm-hmm. or something coming up? Or a um, fiction that <clears throat> wasn't noticed enough? <clears throat> <laughs> well, I mean, if you would, if you guys want to, and I'm not saying you will have to, I'm saying that if you want to, you should really read um, The Warmth in Our Hearts and The Most Valuable Treasure, because those are some jolly good fics that I'm really proud of. <laughs> I mean, they might not be the best, but I'm just saying, you know, maybe they deserve a bit more attention. And then we lost all our viewers. <laughs> No, I think we'll lose viewers if we start reading them aloud right here. Okay, chapter... No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was a dark and stormy night. Wait oh, a minute. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for coming by to talk with us today. Oh, that was no problem. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so humbled and honored that you would even have me on your show. <laughs> oh, no, you're an interesting person. Of course I'm going to have you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, everybody, uh, today we have been talking with Calvin Death Scar. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> it's difficult to say that in a normal voice. I instantly revert into a guar fo- phase. But all right. I don't blame you. <laughs> I think a lot of people do, too. And I have no problems with that. I have no qualms. We've been talking with Calvin Deathscar. Be sure to follow him on Twitter and check out some of his uh, pony fan fictions. And uh, look for him in the future in video game development. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Everyone, this has been Into the Spotlight with Osaka Jack on Everfree Network. Goodbye. <laughs>